So Lara, what is a language model? Yes, so basically a language model, it's a model that takes in some words and then is going to find the most likely word, so the word that will fit best based on all the other words that surround it. So for example, as you can see here in this diagram, the LLM is going to take in some tokens and then based on the context, so meaning all the other like words, it's going to perform a task. And so it can be a classifier, meaning that it's going to categorize words, or it can be generative, meaning that it's going to find the most likely word. Mm -hmm. When we talk about a large language model, we generally refer to the models that are based on the transformer architecture. Language models, it's not something new, right? They exist since 1950s. However, it's, the, it's since 2017 where there was a big boom with a new way of creating la language models, and that was with the transformers. And the, the idea here is that while before we, we did have language models, they were kind of small in terms of the number of parameters they had. So they had around like million of parameters, where now we are talking about models with billion of parameters. Now the bigger the parameter size the model have, the bigger the model and the more knowledge it has about the world. And this is amazing. Now we said transformers. So Lara, what are transformers exactly? Yes, so Basically, in simple words, a transformer is a type of deep learning model that is used for a lot of different tasks, like language translation or text summarization. And basically, it's called transformer because it changes or it transforms input data into meaningful output. So basically, unlike the other like traditional models, basically, transformers, they don't rely on fixed sequential processing. Instead, they consider all parts of the input simultaneously. And the key idea, the heart of it, is really self-attention. So imagine that you're reading a sentence. So, well, instead of reading each word one by one, what a transformer is able to do is basically look at all of the words uh, at once and then decide which ones it's going to pay more attention to based on the concept, on the context. And so that makes transformers really, really efficient um, for capturing complex relationships in data. And that's why like, they're really popular for anything that has to do with, with NLP, with natural language processing. And, uh, and that's unlocked a lot of things, especially in the, in the area of translation. I think we could all see that from 2017 onwards, that this improved a lot, basically. Uh, but uh, yeah, here we have a very complicated diagram that's taken from a, a paper introducing the transformers. Uh, Maria, can you explain a bit more about this architecture and how it works uh, at a high level? Yes, of course. So a transformer architecture usually has two parts, right? One is the encoder and the other the decoder. The encoder, think of it as the part of the system that understands and represents the input data. So imagine, for example, you're trying to translate a sentence from English to French. The encoder takes its word of the English sentence and transforms it into a format that captures its meaning. Then it looks at all the other words simultaneously, considering their, their relationship and the context. And then the encoded information is passed to the decoder for further processing. So since the encoder created this different representation of the input data, the decoder takes this and generates the output sequence, like the translated sentence to friends. In, it works basically as a step-by-step -step manner. That's why you kind of see in different LLMs that follow this architecture that one by one, the words are being created as you ask for, as you prompt it with something. And it pays attention to the encoded information and it generates, and it has, that it has generated so far, and so and making sure that the translation actually makes sense and it's accurate. And so the role of the decoder mainly is to decode the encoded information into something that makes sense. That's why it's called a decoder. Right, so basically in simple terms, uh, so the encoder is going to understand the inputs and then the decoder is going to use 
that understanding, that context, so that it generates whatever the desired output is, whether it's translation or something like that. And so that's how together they have like a powerful architecture for tasks that involve transforming one type of data into another, like language translation, for example. Nice. So language models can have many different architectures. So some follow only the encoder pattern, some follow only the decoder pattern, and some actually have an encoder and a decoder component. Um, models like uh, the ones that follow the encoder architecture is bare, if you've heard of it, whereas the decoder one, is all the GPT models follow decoder architecture. And then there are some that combine both like BART or T5. Uh, now, why there are so many different architectures, they have pros and cons that we can discuss in a different video.